Thanks, Steve. Halloween is not the only big day right around the corner. The U.S. presidential election is next Tuesday, but many Connecticut residents have already casted their votes. A record 455,000 absentee ballots have already been returned in Connecticut. In the previous 2016 election, there were only 125,000 returned in total. With the election still being days away, government officials are still unsure of just how many absentee ballots will be cast by November 3rd. Quinnipiac is also making plans for November 3rd to make sure that its students can easily vote. In an email sent to faculty on Monday, the university encouraged professors to record any classes on election day and share with their students their plan for class so that they can make arrangements to vote ahead of time. The email also included links for faculty to share with students that included information about the election and how they can register and make a pledge to vote. Thank you guys. I'm standing in front of what once was the Columbus, Christopher Columbus statue here in New Haven. The city did decide this past summer to take the statue down, which has caused for a lot of controversy, especially this past week being Columbus Day this past Monday. The annual New Haven Columbus Day Parade was canceled due to COVID-19 this year, but it's the changing attitudes of many that may keep it canceled for good. Back in June, this statue of Christopher Columbus in Worcester Square was taken down by the city. Even after its removal, the Italian-American heritage group still gathered at what was the statue to leave wreaths and celebrate the holiday. Italians in the community remain in support of Columbus Day and view it as a way to celebrate their heritage. However, some New Haven residents disagree with the holiday and would rather celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. They deserve more recognition than Columbus ever did because this is their land and we should respect it. The Italian American Heritage Group plans to fight the city of New Haven in court if the statue is not put back up. But some people in the community agree with the removal. I'm in favor of removing all statues to people that from of people that oppressed other people and like you know basically were murderous settler colonialists. For now, the mayor of New Haven called this Monday the city's first Italian Heritage Day as a way to appease both sides of the argument. Despite the complaints to put this statue back up, the city, as of right now, has no plans to do so. For q and I'm Shannon Tierney. Back to you guys at the desk. The NBA Finals continue as the Miami Heat take on the Los Angeles Lakers inside the Disney bubble. The Lakers currently lead the series 3-1. to one. This means they could end it all tomorrow night if they win Game 5. The Lakers will be wearing special Kobe Bryant Mamba jerseys for the game. They'd originally planned to wear them for Game 7, but are now planning to seal the deal in Game 5. Since Bryant's death, these jerseys have become very special for LeBron James and squad. They are 4-0 and oh in the jerseys. You can watch Game 5 tomorrow night at 9 p.m. live on ESPN. The MLB Divisional Playoffs are in full swing. Currently, the Houston Astros are up 2-1 against the Oakland Athletics. Many baseball fans are actively rooting against the Astros as they're coming off of a huge cheating scandal this year. The Tampa Bay Rays are up 2-1 against the Yankees, and the San Diego Padres need to step up as they are down 0-2 to the Los Angeles Dodgers in their series. The Miami Marlins are in a similar boat with the Atlanta Braves having a 2-0 lead on them. League championships are set to start this Sunday, and the World Series will follow with Game 1 scheduled for the 20th of October. The NFL regular season faced some bumps this week due to COVID-19. First, the league had to reschedule the Titans-Steelers game after several Titans players tested positive for COVID-19. Since both teams couldn't play, this week counted as their bye, and they will play against each other in Week 7. The Patriots also ran into issues with the virus when their starting quarterback, Cam Newton, tested positive. Since he was the only positive test, the Pats game against the Chiefs was only moved from Sunday to Monday. This seemed like a good plan until the Patriots star cornerback Stephon Gilmore tested positive on Tuesday. Chiefs fans are very concerned as Gilmore hugged Patrick Mahomes after the game. The Patriots reported this morning that they have no other positive cases but will continue remote practicing for now. They will be playing the Denver Broncos this Sunday. Moving into some more local sports news, Quinnipiac Hockey's own Ty Smolenic was drafted to the Florida Panthers yesterday. He was the 74th selected in the draft, the highest ever for any Quinnipiac hockey player. Smolenic will also be joining former QU captain Chase Prisky in Florida, who is currently playing for the Panthers AHL team. ECAC hockey is set to start this winter with new COVID re regulations, so Bobcat students will soon get to see Smolenic in action for their team. 
Roberto, Emma, are you guys excited to watch Ty hit the ice for the Bobcats? The Ellen Show has returned. During her time away, Ellen received major backlash from the public after employees came forward accusing her of making a toxic workplace environment. Ellen made sure to address the elephant in the room in her first show back. She apologized and took responsibility for how the show was ran and claimed that they had made changes for this new chapter. Besides Ellen's speech and a new virtual audience, the show went on as normal. Some of her guests for the week included Kris Jenner and TikToker Addison Rae. After getting engaged in July, singer Demi Lovato and her fiancé Max Erich have already called it quits. Lovato told sources that she ended it after realizing Erich's intentions with her weren't genuine. People close to the couple also thought that Erich was using the pop star for her fame. Instead of being discouraged in this moment, Lovato used it as a source of inspiration and wrote a song. Her new single, which was released last night, is titled Still Have Me. The song is about the failed engagement and coming out of it single but strong. It's currently sitting at number one on iTunes. Staying in the world of music, last week the iHeartRadio had their annual music awards, and one performance stuck out among the rest. Miley Cyrus performed a rock cover of Blondie's Heart of Glass. Immediately, the internet blew up, praising Cyrus's performance, with many saying the genre of rock is perfect for her voice. After the cover received over 3 million views on YouTube in just under a week, Cyrus decided to drop her rendition of Heart of Glass on all streaming platforms. And supermodel Gigi Hadid and singer Zayn Malik welcomed their baby girl to the world. This is both the star's first child. Malik shared a photo holding the baby's hand to Instagram saying, the love I feel for this tiny human is beyond my understanding. Now, this baby's famous relatives don't stop at her parents. Her aunt is Bella Hadid. Dua Lipa has been dating the Hadid's brother and will likely be an aunt to the child. Gigi also posted a handmade blanket made by Auntie Taylor Swift for the baby. While the public is yet to know the name of the little girl, with all this fame surrounding her, I'm sure she'll be a household name before we know it. Now, Kay and Jalen, do you have any favorite celebrity baby names to give Gigi and Zane some ideas? 